We're looking at lesson 11. Lesson 11 is page 45. So when payments per year do not match, do not match compounds per year. Uh, so there's, we're going to go through sort of how these work. Um, they're not, it's not overly um, tricky how they work. It's just um, one way to look at it. So in this case here, we're going to look at a balance table and then um, we're going to show how to make a recursive rule out of this, but you can also just use your finance app. The finance app is brilliant in these kinds of questions, but it's just one thing to note. Okay, so when your payments per year don't match your compounds per year, you're just going to be wary. If you're asked to make a sequence, it's actually trickier than you think. So it's just like an alarm bell when you when you hear like. Like you say, the payments per year is quarterly, and maybe that the compounds per year is monthly. It's going to be a more challenging question. So it's just something to think about. Okay, so let's go into the example where compounds per year occur more often than payments per year. So suppose that 25k is invested into an account paying interest of 8% per annum compounded quarterly, with $4,000 withdrawn from the account at the end of the first year and at the end of every year thereafter. So let's have a look at that situation you've got a compounds per year of four, and it looks like they're withdrawing at the end of every year. So the payments per year is one. So we can see that these don't match up. The compounds per year is greater than the payments per year. Now, what does this look like in terms of a bank balance? Well, I think this is a great way to look at it. Let's look at what happens to an account, and then let's try to make a recursive rule out of it. So our starting amount, we've got 25K. Now, if they're earning 8% compounded quarterly, we know that's going to turn into 2% per quarter. Therefore, the compound interest we're earning, we're going to times by 0 0.02. So we're getting $500 there of compound interest. And then uh, you have no withdrawal there. Now, we're looking at the basically end of the first installment. In this case, installment's going to be compounded quarterly okay so I probably should use the word installment but the end of each let's go quarter in this case so uh, how much do we have by the end of that quarter we've got twenty five thousand five hundred dollars okay just simply adding this and this and that makes that now that amount goes up here okay now how much do we earn in the end of the second quarter you times by 0 0.02 and what comes out Slightly more interest, $510, is earned at the end of that second quarter. We're not withdrawing again, are we? Because we're only going to be withdrawing at the end of each year. So the amount we have now is $26,010. That goes back up here. We rinse and repeat, find 2%. That amount should go slightly higher than $510. We've got $520.20. No withdrawal. And then we find out the balance. So we've got $26,530.20. That bit comes up here. Oh, that's uh, no good. Try that again. Okay. We times by 0 0.02. We get interest of 530.60. Now, at the end of the first quarter, he's going to withdraw that amount of $4,000. So he's doing a withdrawal of $4,000. So what do we have? We've got this plus this, then we take that amount there, which equals this final balance of $23,060. Sorry, $23,060.80. So there we have it. We've uh, made a balance table that represents this situation. Now, I'm just going to show this as a picture over here. Um, you might not be able to fit in your notes, but you can also represent this using a graph. So let's say, for instance, we've got this graph here where this is the number of installments. So two, three, four, okay. And this is quarters, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. We're starting off with a certain amount of money. In that case, it's starting off at 25K. You go across and you go up the interest, right? And that's $500. That's coming from this bit here. Then go across again. 
We earn a bit more interest at the end of the second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, and at the fourth quarter, we can see that they're going to draw out some money. In that case, it's going to be four grand, and it comes down to about here because it's going to be a bit lower, and it's two thousand sixty dollars and eighty cents. So what's happening? Well, we get a compounding effect that happens four times. Okay, then we take out that balance. So we're asked to construct a recursive rule. Now, I'm going to think about the situation, looking at both the balance table and that diagram I've just represented, and then we can just use our rule blindly. So um, we go a n plus 1 is equal to 1 plus r and n. Now, in this case, you're getting 0.02%, right? So we can say we're getting 2%. Now, how many times do we earn 2%? before we do our withdrawal, okay? Now remember, N is going to be every year. So, and it's always related to the payments per year, that N value. So let's have a look. We get 1.02, we times it once, two times, three times, four times. So in that case, once, two times, three times, four times. So therefore, we're gonna go 1.02, times 1.02 times by 1.02 times by 1.02, etc. Now that's really annoying to write. We know that this is going to turn into 1.02 to the 4 times by an. So we times that initial value 1.02 to the 4 times. And then we take off that withdrawal of $4,000 where a0, and I'll just draw it over here, a0 is 25k. Okay, so that's how we do it. Now we can just blindly use our rule as well. So the rule is up here, I'll just circle it there. And it looks a little bit tricky. The main thing is this part here, compounds per year and payments per year. Compounds per year in this case was uh, quarterly and the payments per year was four, uh, manually. So we can just use that rule now. And I'll show you how it works. You just go AM plus one is equal to one plus 0 0.08 on four. That's uh, this bit here, R and N, okay? To the power of compounds per year. Now compounds per year in this case is four over one, payments per year is one, times by A N. We're taking out that payment because it's gonna reduce the balance and then A zero is $25,000. And I'll just highlight that bit there. That comes from there. Okay, now you can see here, you can either just blindly use that rule or you can think about it instead. It's up to you, both ways work. All right, let's keep going. Use the recursive rule to determine the balance of the account immediately after the sixth withdrawal. Now in this case here, sixth withdrawal, we're looking for a six. So let's use our um, sequence app and let's just find that answer. So go into there, go into your class pad menu, go across, go sequence, and let's plug this thing in. One, oh, let's just clear it all. It's so easy to make a mistake if you don't clear it. Okay, and then we're gonna go 0 0.08 on four. And then keyboard to the power of four. You can go four over one if you want. Go A N, and then we're gonna take out those withdrawals of, and I think it was $4,000. Our starting balance was $25,000. Then we go execute, we go down, and we want to find A6, there it is, 10686.67, okay? And so with that, we write our answer, A6 is equal to 10686, sorry, 0.67, okay? So there we go, that was not too bad, but the finance app is better at these. So this is typically better, but what a test could do is they, the, the test uh, could ask you to um, make a recursive rule to show the sequence instead. And so there you'd need that skill, okay? Now let's just use the finance app to confirm our answer. So let's do our payments per year. The payments per year was one. The compounds per year was four. We wanna work out the FV. We know that the payments there is, it's a withdrawal, so it'd be $4,000 into your pocket. The PV, it was an investment. So he's investing $25,000. The interest rate was 8%. And we know that from payments per year times by time, 
that this is going to be 1 times by um, 6 years, which is 6. Okay, so let's see where we go with that. Menu, we go finance, compound interest, and type all this in. 6, 8, negative 25,000, payments for $1,000. FE, we don't know that yet, in compounds per year is 4. Click FE, 10686.67. So we can see the same answers popped out there. Okay. Um, now, <clears throat> obviously, you want to use to you want to lean towards the finance app for all these questions, unless you have to use a sequence. Okay, we can just see it's way easier. There we go. Okay. Now, what I want you to do now, gents, hopefully that all made sense. Go into the your turn, basically pause the video, and then press play when you're ready to go, and then we'll go through the answers. Okay. We're going to go through the answers now. So, uh, we've supposed we've got 18Ks invested into an account paying 16% interest compounded monthly. So we can see compounds per year is 12. Um, with 2,000 withdrawn from the account at the end of the first year. So it looks like payments per year is one as well, like the previous one. Construct a recursive rule. We're going to use that uh, rule blindly this time. 1 plus R on N to the power of, and then it was going to be compounds per year on payments per year times AN plus or minus PMT, where A0 is equal to P. Okay, so let's use our rule. Plus 1, 1 plus, our rate is 0 0.16 on 12. Compounds per year is 12. Compounds per year in this case is going to be 12 on 1. So you can just write simply to the power of 12. And then we're doing a withdraw. So take $2,000 with A0 is equal to $18,000. Well, let's fix that one up. So there's our answer there. Use the recursive rule, and that should say B there. Use the recursive rule to determine the balance of the account immediately after the six withdrawal. So yet again, we're finding A6. Reason for that is it's the sixth withdrawal, which is six years. So let's just chuck that in and see what we get into our finance app. Okay, so, um, oh, wrong app. Menu, sequence, okay. Now that value there was going to be 16 on 12. And this was to the power of 12. And we were drawing two grand this time out of the account. And we've got 18 K, this one. All right, let's see what we get. Um, go down to A6. I've got $28,193.79. Uh, Common error, do you see how it says 28194 in the blue box? Your calculator is just rounding it to the nearest. Whereas do you see that the actual number here, down here, is actually 28193.80? Uh, you know, really important. Really, something I sometimes say, they write that number down, point, you know, four point, and then they go 0 0.80. So that's actually an error that does happen a fair bit. So just watch out for that one. So here we go. Let's write down that answer. Okay. We've got A6 is equal to $28,193.80. Let's confirm it using our class pad, uh, the finance app, PV, negative 18,000 is investment. There, we're solving for that, 112, and the payments per year is 1 times by time is 6, so that's 1 times 6 is 6. Let's check in the finance app. Hopefully the same number pops out. Okay, menu, finance, 6, we've got 16 here, negative 18,000, 2,000, 12, FA 28193.80, which is the same answer. Okay, so there we go. Um, in the next video, I'm going to um, show you this question. Um, reason being is it's um, a bit of a side, side note. Sometimes they do appear, but they don't occur that often. So you can write these are a rarer type of question, but they can appear. Thanks very much for your time today, and I hope you found this video as useful.